Now we don't have so many tools left, but we have a manual tool that some people love to use, and that is texture paint. So I will go through the texture paint as well, so you know how uh, you work with it. I don't use it so much because uh, you always have a risk that it gets a little bit pixelated, and if we're working with realistic things, we don't want that. But I will get through it anyway, so you know how it works. The nice thing with uh, the texture paint is that it doesn't care about low poly or high poly. So in this case, it's better to work with a low poly than a high poly. However, we need a UV map, so we start with that. So I select this base here, and then I just press tab to go to edit mode and I do some uh, uh, line here to, to divide it in some way. So I think that will be okay to do the line there and go to UV and make a seam out of it. So I press mark seam and then I press A, uh, UV and wrap. And then we will see the result here. So I create a new window and I go to the UV editor and I take this away by pressing this across here, and now we have it. Uh, when working with uh, texture paint, as we will do here, then we are actually painting on an image. So that means that I would like to have as large canvas as possible to work with, meaning that I would like to have as big UV as possible to work with. You will not see uh, the front and the back or my lantern so I can use the same space and duplicate everything, which means that I can put this part here uh, above this part here uh, to make room for uh, more painting with a nicer detail. So I just select this uh, island mode here and move this up by pressing G. So we have it about similar there pressing A to select everything, and then G to move it a bit, and then S for scale it up, so we get it nice and big like this. Then it's easier to get a nice looking end result here, because now we're using the complete space for our UV. Uh, how the UV looks, uh, that doesn't matter, because we are painting on it in 3D, so we see everything we are painting, uh, so we can just leave it like this and then I just press tab again I go back so we have it and we need a material on it of course so I go to my material properties a uh, new and then we have it in here and since we are working with an image we need to create an image so I press shift a texture and an image texture and I put that into the base color here so image texture into base color and we create a new image we can call that uh, scratches, like this, and have a width of 40, 96, and the same width, the height, so it's squared. And we can start with a black color, and then the scratches will be white. Uh, we will work with alpha, uh, we will have that so it will be smooth, and then we press OK. And now we have done all the things we need to do before we go into texture paint. So now I can go into texture paint here and everything is black. And I can work with this even if I'm in solid mode, which means that we can see more clear what we're doing. So now I can start to paint here as you can see, and that will directly be on our image. I can remove that doing undo and add some scratches instead. And the scratches will also be then a texture or an image that I use to paint this with. So I go to my tool and there you can see the name scratches because of this image here, it's called scratches. So that is what I'm working with. And you can have a lot of different types of things here, but we just keep it as it is, it's no problem. We only would like to use this as a mask anyway. Uh, here you can decide if you want to uh, do some uh, 
overlay or you will erase thing or you will add thing but we can just keep that as well to just mix uh, the color could be white since this is black so we got a good contrast but what we will do now is to go to texture and in texture we can add a texture here so we press new and we can call this scratches as well so then we know it and we can then go to texture down here and add an image so i press open and here i have one two three different types of scratches and all those three are procedural and if you look at the, the description below this tutorial you will see not only one blend file but two blend files and the second one is my scratches that I have done procedurally and the reason that I do it like this is because well I like to do stuff procedurally but it's also so that if you go to like textures.com and so on uh, the resolution on those scratches are really really low uh, like 512 or something like that if you are not paying anything or getting to be like a premium member uh, so it's a bit hard to find really good scratches you can of course buy them from different places but it's very very easy to do them procedurally as well so I have done that here so I select one of these and press open image and then we have a lot of scratches here and we also have a lot of scratches here and now we can start painting here and it will be directly on this one and we can change the mapping here into like random so we get some randomize on this one and I can change the brush size with F as normal so we have it, uh, some size here and now you can see I then add those scratches in very easily by just clicking around a bit like that put them wherever I would like to have them uh, I can do this uh, procedurally as well to uh, control uh, a little bit where I would like to have them but mostly when you do it procedurally uh, it will be completely random here you can decide that you will perhaps use a little bit more on the edges here for instance and then just start to paint uh, that edges here with some scratches and since I put the UV maps uh, above each other you will also get scratches on the other side here but as I said no one will notice that these scratches here are exactly the same as these here so now you have a good area to work on high resolution it will look okay when we do uh, our realistic image here and if you want to see how it looks then you can go to render view here uh, we then have all those scratches in here and now we only have like white and black but we can also use that as a bump map of course and uh, then it's just to put an shift a here and put in a vector and a bump and since these are white right now that means that they go up and we would like them to go down so we use invert here when we use the bump map for it and then put in the height and the normal into the normal here and then you get these and now it's really really hard so we take down the strength and take down this distance a bit and now you can see we get all these scratches on our lantern here uh, by painting it with the texture paint and then of course you need to later on save this image as well otherwise it will just go and disappear so it must be saved uh, together with uh, the material we are doing here to be able to uh, export it or give it or save it for later in any way to use it you need to save the image so uh, that is the way that you can work with when it comes to uh, texture paint and as i said uh, it's really good to use if you have like a low poly uh, if you have high poly it can take some time so if i take up this a bit and now paint uh, it will i can go to here it will take some time you can see it 
before it goes to the next uh, place uh, and if you have a really big like that it will take even more time now you can see it's really locked while it's calculating where the thing should be here and that is because we have a high resolution on the image but we also have a lot of polygons and UV and so on so a low amount of polygons a small image and it will go fast but it will be pixelated so higher resolution on the image it will look better but it will take some more time to do it okay so uh, that is how it works it's rather simple to work with um, and as I said I don't use it so much because we have other ways to create it but it's good to know and it's a tool that we should use um, what I can use or what I can show now is uh, the other blend file just very very quickly so you can see how these really really good scratches look uh, and you might think that oh that must be like a thousand of notes but it's not it's very easy to do so I go here and I select the scratches yes so you can see it and this is I think the most complicated one and I think it's have like uh, 12 or 13 nodes and the fun thing with this is that you can't see it because the uh, it's really really small scratches what I can do is that I can take away the transparent here and then it's easier to see you can see those small small scratches here and I like to use it uh, in this way because uh, then you get this feeling that something has touched the surface but you have not exaggerated it's it's just perfect to have it like this so I try to use small scratches uh, like this uh, to make it look good and if I put transparent in background they are almost invisible then I have some other scratches as well so we can change this to scratches number one which is the easiest one it looks really really nice here but if we look at the nodes it's uh, very very small it's one noise texture filtering out um, finished just changing the parameters a bit here and then you get these scratches so you don't have to be over complicated this looks really random and it looks like really good scratches you have some long ones and you have something that is connected in a more yeah uh, grouped way so to say so it's, it's like reality and the reason that I get it like this by using only these few nodes is that I use a lot of distortion here so no distortion you get this type of sight but if you then uh, drag it out a bit you can get these longer lines here so some distortion and you get this and then I have uh, scratches number two which are more like those long scratches that goes in different type of direction and that one is not that long even if it okay this could be the longest one uh, what I do in this case is more that I take some noise uh, scale it up and then I just rotate things so uh, use something called floor here and the scale and floor together is working like this that I get the value from 0 to 1 scale it up so it could be like 0 to 8 or something and floor take the lowest value so it doesn't take uh, 0 point something it takes 0 it takes 1 it takes 2 not 2.5 it only takes 2 3 and so on so if I scale this to 8 it will be 8 values out and every time that is changed then we get the new value from the noise here and I put that in and do some rotation and I then scale it really much and then I can get the noise to get these lines because of the scaling here so one to rotate it one to scale it to be lines other than that it's just the noise so it's noise that is distorted in different directions not so yet so complicated uh, rather easy to work with however it looks nice it looks like really good scratches and we can use that uh, directly we don't have to use it as images we can import this material and use that in our lantern 
later on if we want to use it more realistic. And in that case, we will never be afraid of pixelation or something like that, since it's procedural. Okay, so now you know a little bit about texture paint as well. Uh, then there are a few more tools, but we can take them uh, after when we are starting to uh, aging our uh, lantern. So now you have like the basic library to work with, and uh, it will be, re yeah, you will you can use that for really much, and you rarely would like to or have to use more than what I have showed you here. So now it's more going from theory into practice in the next session. And I will see you there. So say yes, bye for now.